Welcome back to Combate Global. Kayla Rocco on your right, 32, a bit older than Andrea Meneses, but the height, reach, weight, exactly the same. It's the intangibles that'll decide this fight. Let's get it started. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso atom, we continue with much more action this bout. In the atom weight division, los jueces son the judges are Robert Christopher Edgehill, Richard Green Sr., and James Lazaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Introducing the, red, the blue corner, la esquina azul, wearing black, vestida de negro. Su peso oficial, 106 libras, her official weight, 106 pounds, with a pro record of five victories and one defeat. Con un record profesional de cinco victorias y una derrota. From Gaba, España, Andrea Calimenez. In the red corner, la esquina roja, wearing white and red, vestida de rojo y blanco. Su peso oficial, 105.2 libras, her official weight, 105.2 pounds, with a pro record of five victories and four losses. Con un record profesional de cinco victorias y cuatro derrotas. From Reading, Pennsylvania, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Kayla K. Rock Rasho. El referee, Ramón Ramos. Oh, they look focused and ready to go. Andrea Manessis, Kayla Rocco. Manessis right there in black from Spain. Her opponent from here in the United States, Coconut Creek, Florida. Kayla Rocco, and we are underway, round number one. Vanessa has told me since her last fight, she's been putting in a lot more work on the ground. She wanted to build up some of that jujitsu, that ground game, to have more confidence. That's striking, it's always there, and that's for Rocco, she's been putting in that ground. She looks in phenomenal shape, by the way, Jimmy. Yeah, started out boxing, and that's what she was doing. When Dean, she got in touch with Dean Thomas, came out to train some MMA, but an amateur champion in boxing. Very tight hands, excellent jab, good combinations. Very tight from the last time. I think really more tight with those shots. Vanessa has that Kyokushin karate background. She says, I have faith in my kicks, especially my head kick. It's impossible to see coming. By the way, you get a little training in Okinawa. You went out there. I was in Tokyo training. Yeah, never Tokyo. Got okay, out, so never got. Ooh, had a boy, blast. then I got to tell you a story about that the other day. <laughs> I have nightmares about five, <laughs> fighting five guys in a row. I got to tell you about the dojo bar. <laughs> You have, but I won't say it on air. <laughs> Let's get back to the fight. Manessas trying to deal with the combinations of Rocco. Rocco on your right. In the red and white. Manessas in the black. Yeah, Kayla just seems like very confident. It's more like stalking her prey. A great Good right hand. hand. Yeah. Manessas five and one. <laughs> Yeah, Man Manessa needs to let them hands go when the opportunity is there. It seems that she'll throw in a couple and then she'll back away. Ooh, let's get that stiff jab there from Manessa. She has a very good jab. We talk about the jab. I think the rule of the game here, the topic of the day is going to be that jab, Jimmy. Coach, you tell you, if you can't deal with a boxer's jab, you're going to have a long night. Oh, a great way to go down to the ground. Corner, Manessa's telling you to bob and weave and move your head, but no, ne not necessary right now. Is Kayla taking it to the ground? Oh, taking a big risk, trying to step over the guard. Manessa has to turn, and she doesn't. Back now in trouble, one hook in. Rocco hunting for the, the rear naked, but can't get that right hook in. Yeah, confident in her boxing, but boy, she's putting in that work on the ground as well. Rocco showing that well-roundedness as a fighter. Man, wrestling season just getting started. It's more of a wrestling ride than a jiu-jitsu ride. One hook in. 
She's going to be attached to the back. Manessis has to be very careful here. Good job trying to step over to get that, that second hook. And that's it. He has yep. two in. Manessis there trying to get get that wrist control to find that opportunity to twist it. But she has that body like real tight, Jimmy. Warning to the back of the head. Now searching for the rear naked, trying to get that right arm underneath. It might be there. Softening Can't lock up. her hands yet. Yeah, she's softening up Manessa's trying to see that opportunity to get that right arm. Manessa's listening to that corner. Rule number one in this position, Rodolfo, you know it well. Defend your neck first. At all times. Protect your neck, Wu-Tang once said. Oh, ooh, you went there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> ah. You threw my in the Wu-Tang no, clan. Don't, don't I love it. hip-hop knowledge, all right? Protect your neck. <laughs> then worry about position right now. It looks like the rear, na rear naked getting tighter. Well, that chin is down, neck. though. Manessis using her chin as that last line of defense. Dangerous position for Manessis. Everything is critical. Look at that opportunity right there for Rocco. Danger for Rocco is you can also burn your arms out going for the rear naked as well. Gotta be careful about that. Good way to see how she tried to change the body lock there. That constant changing, you know, adds that blood flow. Yeah, the hooks are better for controlling the hips. Body lock takes a lot of energy out of you. Going back and forth is a really good strategy. And Rocco using that well. Got a minute left to see how much of this position here Manessas can withstand or escape. Now cranking on the chin. It's making Manessas' life miserable. Uh, you know, I was about to tell you how bad that feels <laughs> to be there. <laughs> oh, like, I don't know. It is awful. <laughs> it is horrendous. You see stars, you see everything there. You know, it's one of these where, you know, Rocco basically has round number one at this right. point. If you're Manessa, it's like, okay, she has round number one. Live to survive another day. That's got to be in your head right now. All right, she has 25 seconds. Yep. Corner curse leading on Manessa to survive to make it to the second chapter of the bout. Rocco, when you talk about her, some, her all-around MMA game, she says that's what's been improving an American top team. And we're and seeing we, it. We're seeing it right now in round number one. Great ground game from Kayla Rocco. She dominates round number one. Vamos a combinar, no puedes ir al boxeo Corazón. con ella. Respira, respira, respira grande. Sí. Dame los brazos. No, no puedes ir al boxeo, Andrea, con ella. Saca mano, pierna, mano, pierna. No tiene nada. Fíjate, el líder le entra. El líder le entra, mano, pierna. No podemos ir a boxear ni a una mano. ¿Vale? Combina, combina mano. Te, te hemos dicho distancia, pelea de kickboxing. Pelea kickboxing, es una tía boxeadora. Es una tía boxeadora, no tiene más. ¿Vale? Ya está. Y si vamos a, solo vamos a caer por encima. ¿Estás buscando el 1? Sí, uno, tío, dos, y ya está. Y ya está. ¿Uno, uno, dos o uno, dos? Ella combina, sí, tío. Combina y cambia. Sí, sí, sí. You're looking at Kayla Rocco and her opponent, Andres, Andrea Meneses. Meneses in the black, Rocco in the red and white, round number two. What do you think about round number one, Rodolfo? Yeah, I mean, I'm down. Kayla just took that round, but good advice there in the corner of Meneses, and rightfully so. You don't want to box with Kayla. That is her strength. So what did they say? Well, kickbox with her. That's your background in the first place, right? Use those hand and feet or leg combinations to keep her away. Use some of that deep. Boxers, you know, they're going to come right at you. They're going to dance around. Use the deep. Use some of those low kicks to throw off Kayla off bound. And if it goes to the ground, and try to quickly get on top. Kayla, I mean, Kayla's just doing everything. She's giving her the big game plan. She's sticking to the plan. Now we have open scoring here, Combate Global. So we know how the judges saw round number one. No surprise at all. Kayla Rocco, 10 9, all three judges' scorecards. Manessis, though, in round number two, looks like she's taking her coach's advice. A lot more footwork. You can see those kicks. legs. Yep, his shots of the inner thigh are going to chop down the limber of those boxers. And trust me, as if you have that background in boxing, you made a transition to MMA. That is what you hate the most, the kicks. And it takes a long time to get adjusted. Of course, Kayla has been already for some time now working on that, but 
you always have that memory that, God, I hate these kicks. Boxers are heavy on the lead leg. Kickboxers are light on the lead leg. It's just one of the differences between the two styles. And boxers tend to be vulnerable to leg kick, but they throw nice combinations just like that one. But Manessa, there you go, front kick. Manessa is, you can see some of the difference here, the change in the game plan, that it is working. She has been able to connect some hooks that has worked that chopped her off a bit. And look at the, the differences in the stats, Jimmy. And no surprise here, Rocco great with the punches, 13 out of 27 so far. Manessis, more accurate with the kicks. She has landed nine. Macho has landed five, only thrown 11. It's been hands versus feet so far. If I was Manessis, I mean, that left thigh is there for you to just kick. You can see a little shiner on. Oh, there it is, but she has to. And that's, that's what I've seen with Manessis. When she feels blood, she has to go for the attack. Right hand, very, very accurate of Rocco over the top. More of those low kicks. Maybe some calf kicks. Trust me, boxers hate that. And it's money in the bank, Rodolfo. It's one of those things that you start throwing it early on. Oh, is it working? Is it working? Round number two, your opponent starts slowing down. Yep. It, it's a process with those kicks. It, it, it builds up little by little by little until eventually it meets its purpose. But well, certainly Manessa is having better luck in round number two. Not only just winning the round, but certainly showing her talent a little bit more. Round number one, Rocco was all over on the feet and on the ground. It seems some of the pace of Kayla has calmed down just a tad bit from that first round, Jimmy. She went hard for the rear naked. Had Manessa's back for a long time. Couldn't finish a nice right hand from Rocco. You know, but that's that confidence she had. I was about to say, like, where was that takedown approach? And there it is. She read my mind. Beautiful left hook to the double leg. And Manessa's trying to get on land on top. A good way of using that weight from Kayla and keeping her on the ground for Manessa's. Half guard so difficult to use in MMA. Rocco knows it. Heavy hips. And you know what's interesting, what's the point out here is that Kayla feels more confident as a well-rounded fighter because she's able to go to the ground. There comes a time when you come from a different sport where you aren't just a boxer doing MMA. You're a mixed martial artist. And Kayla Rocco tonight looks like a mixed martial artist going over top thinking guillotine or transitioning to the back. Manessas has to be very careful at her back taking most of round number one. Better turn this time from Manessas, but still in triangle armbar danger in this position. Well, the fact that she's really close to La Hala, that makes it a bit difficult here, unless she's able to pull up those hips there and pull up that arm. But it's a tough position she's in, Jimmy. Yeah, well, you can't pull your body out and leave a limb right. behind. That's the difficulty of the escape in this position. With 25 seconds left. Rocco working for it, but on a hard time finishing with only 20 seconds left. She'll live to see that third round regardless. Another strong round from Kayla Rocco as we go to the third and final round. Beautiful. We're up two rounds, right? All we gotta be worried about is her kicks. Okay. So when you stay in front of her, keep yeah. feigning, you're gonna see that kick coming, okay. right? Now it's time for you to bring two punches yes, together sir. every time. Yes, so sir. cross hook, hook cross, double jab cross, double jab elbow. Yes, the sir. elbow's there, the jab elbow, elbow's there. She's staying right in front of you. Go, coach. Start throwing elbows, double up your jab, and then you take it down, don't, don't yeah. get jumping towards your head, don't get too crazy, all right? Yeah. I like the strategy, okay? Let's okay. keep like that. At the end, we'll secure the takedown. Is it open square? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're up to run. Let's go. Well, you're seeing Kayla Rocco in the red and white. Confident after her performance in the first two rounds against Andrea Manessis. They're in the black. 
we get ready for round number three. Kayla in the corner asked Thiago Alves, her coach, to have open scoring. How am I yeah. doing? How do you think she's doing? <laughs> I mean, I think anybody can figure this one out, right? You don't have to be uh, kind of swearing Rubik's cue. You can figure this out right there on the spot. Kayla, no doubt, dominating this fight. But as soon as that bell rang, did you see that confidence in Kayla walking into the corner, Jimmy? It, you know, wow. Nothing succeeds like success, right? She's doing very, very well, and so she believes she can continue doing the same thing in round number three. And starting out where she left off, nice tight boxing stance, hands high. Manessa's improving a little bit in the kickboxing in round number two, but she's really got to pick it up in round number three to have a shot. You got less than five minutes, and the only way you're going to win this one is by submission or to KO. And once again, open scoring. We know what the judges think. It is 2018, two rounds to none for Kayla Rocco. It is, as they say, hers to lose in round number three. One thing that's pointed out there by Tiago Alves is great hand combination. Keep throwing him in, but throw in a little elbow in there. That can make a change in this fight. So, Rodolfo, if you're coaching Kayla, you know you're up two rounds to, uh, to none. Is it more of the same? Throw in something different, try to get her out of there. Do you ever change your game plan at all? You adjusted the fight scope, but absolutely. If, if you know that you got this one in your pocket, throw in that elbow, throw in, try to finish it off already. Don't let it try to go to distance. You know, you, you want to leave an impression every fight, Jimmy. And you see more significant strikes landed by Manessas, but I think it's a little misleading. I think Ro Rocco has landed the, the, the better, the more significant, significant strikes, is one Meaningful. way to put it. Also, dominant on the ground. Right. And those two attempts that she made, they were very successful. Yep. The second one and in the second round headed to the clinch and then she quickly finished the job by taking down Manessas. And nice lead uppercut combination from Rocco. Manessas just hasn't really been able to solve the puzzle when it comes to the kickboxing. She tried to throw it in that uppercut, very sweet from Kayla. What I'm liking from Kayla is, she okay, she knows that she has the boxing, the stand-up game in the pocket but she's not afraid to go to the ground. That shows that evolution as a fighter. And there it is, Jimmy. Nice double leg. Manessa's first time really able to get closed guard. Right. Problem is the fight you're losing already. Two and a half minutes left. We're halfway through round number three. Better come up with something big on the ground. Well, Manessa did sneak in an elbow there. And someone's bleeding. I may be Kayla. It might have been because of that elbow that Manessas threw. I think it might be some blood on the neck of Manessas. I know she was a little red. I think it was in the left eye. I couldn't see it from this angle. But maybe from somewhere else. Yeah, it looks like the left eye is yeah. leaking pretty badly. Yeah. It was that elbow that she sneaked in right as soon. Uh, aggressive from the bottom. Uh, as soon as it went to the ground, Manessa snook in that elbow connected, opening her up, Kayla. Uh, but unless it is a fight stopping cut, and so far the referee has not stopped to check it out. Doesn't look that bad. It's not impeding her vision, Jimmy. I think she should succeed or continue with the fight. And warn the elbows, very effective. Now she does have to be careful that it does land in the back of the head. Manessis now staying busy with those elbows. She has a cut to work on. She's going to turn this around. It might be if she opens up that cut. But and Kayla very aware. That's what she had to posture up. Manessis still very busy from the bottom. Hey, she, she got a lot of heart. The transition to the back has been money for Kayla Rocco. Now one minute left in round number three. Watch out for an elbow here for Manessa's indeed opportunities available. Kayla looking at that clock. There it is. She may land an elbow. I wouldn't be surprised if she does. 50 seconds left in a fight that Kayla Rocco has been dominating. Late cut, but is it enough to turn the fight around? That is the question. Well, the fact that Kayla has those legs wrapped around Manessa's is not allowing her to move and land. There, there's that another opportunity of an elbow. Is that left eye, Jimmy? Ooh. They have more short elbows, but Kayla Rocco looks like she's content to hang on and see the final bell. It'll be in 15 seconds. This is how she's ended both rounds. Yeah, Looks like confident. round number three as well, on yes. top. She just gave a nod of confidence there, Jimmy. The Kayla knows she has this one. Right 
seen her in La Jaula before, but this may be her best performance. Ayla Rocco looking like the mixed martial artist she is. Yeah, she looked great in there from all around the stand-up game. And when that work wasn't doing enough, she switched it up, went to the ground. Of course, in the third round was where Vanessa snuck in that elbow. And you're going to see that exchange. It's when they go to the ground, women, Kayla goes for the takedown. Beautiful. Vanessa, she sneaks it in. Bam, right there. So she starts attacking that left eye, busting open and Kayla. For the judges, it was too little, too late. A wipeout for Kayla Rocco. We will make it official when we come back. Oh, there is a gigantic cup in front of La Jaula. Find out about that later, but here's the official decision. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Los jueces James Lasseter and Richard Green Sr. entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27. Lazaro and Green Sr. turn in identical scorecards of 30 to 27. And Robert Christopher Edgehill turns it a card of 29 to 28. Entrega tarjeta de 29 a 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor de la ganadora por decisión unánime. Kayla Rocco! Kayla Rocco becoming a better mixed martial artist every time. And La Jaula, the Adam Waits about to get it on. You see the four-year age advantage, but it's four foot nine for Daniela Hernandez. It leaps off the page. Omar, I'm a, and look at right here, four foot nine to five foot two. Rarely, rarely does Rocco tower over an opponent. That's why. And that is going to be the difference here, Jimmy. If Hernandez is able to use that wrestling against a taller fighter, if she's able to pressure her in, go down for the legs, yeah. that could be the victory for her. Now, Rocco, of course, a decorated amateur boxer. That's what got her on the radar of Dean Thomas, who invited her down to train with American Top Team. But it's a tough style to translate to uh, MMA. It is very, very difficult to translate boxing to MMA. The footwork is different. Everything's different. Can she do it tonight? That is a very, very interesting question. But we'll see in La Jaula how it works out because she's got the train to be a complete mixed martial artist. Once again, American top team, Dean Thomas, taking an interest in her. Tiago Alves is uh, cornering her tonight here Ooh. this evening. Tiago Alves. The pitch bull? The pitch bull. The pitch bull. The yeah, I know the pitch bull very much. <laughs> I'm around a lot of Brazilians, man. The pitch bull. Tiago Alves, my boy. We'll see how it goes. Omar, get us started. Damas y caballeros, ya estamos listos para continuar con mucha más acción en este duelo de damas a un peso pactado de 105 libras. Tres asaltos de cinco minutos, sí señor. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for this fight of, yeah, clash of ladies. Set to three rounds of five minutes at a catch weight of 105 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are Mark Streisand. James Lazaro y Ricardo Celis. Estamos listos. El momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul. Now introducing out of the blue corner. Entra con un récord invicto de cuatro victorias sin derrotas. She steps in with an undefeated record of four victories, never seen the loss. Vistiendo todo de rojo, wearing all red. She registers 105.4 pounds. Registra un peso oficial de 105.4 libras. Es de Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Daniela Tiny Mensa. Y ahora su oponente en la esquina roja. Now her opponent out of the red corner. Entra con un récord de cuatro victorias, cuatro derrotas. She steps in with a record of four victories and four losses. Vistiendo todo de negro, wearing all black. 
registró 105.8 libras en la báscula. She stepped, stepped in at 105.8 pounds. Es de Reading, Pennsylvania. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Kyla K. Rock Rancho. Y el referee para este combate, el puertorriqueño Ramón Ramos. That's right, the ladies underway. Kayla Rocco versus Daniela Hernandez. Daniela Hernandez in the, looks like the orange. And it is Kayla Rocco in the black. And we are underway. Johnny Eblen in the corner, of course, of Kayla Rocco. So is the pit bull, Thiago Alves. Both fighters. Oh! oh Already, jab Vinny. right to the chin. Whoa, I didn't even feel it. That's how fast Rocco is. And now she's going to the ground game. And we've seen some of that groundwork that she has. You talked about earlier, okay, boxing. Has she applied some of that other tools? We're seeing it here tonight, Jimmy, already. It hasn't even been a minute yet into and the fight. Daniela Hernandez going right to her instincts, going for the wrestling. She represented Mexico in the Pan American Wrestling Championships. Recently retired from wrestling, but she spent years on the mat. You see right there, going for the leg immediately under duress. It's natural instinct to go for the legs. She is trying to clear the cobwebs as Kayla Rocco trying to isolate the left arm of Daniela Hernandez. Almost inverted. But then we go into the wrestling, but what about the jiu-jitsu? You know, what does she know? What can she bring to the table? And how good are her escapes from, her, right. from here as Kayla Rocco working hard on that arm. She's not letting go of that arm, Jimmy. Kayla Rocco wants to finish off this fight very early on. Also, the, if, if the angle of the hip switches, a yeah. lot of triangle danger here. About a million things that can go wrong right now for Many, Daniela yeah. Hernandez. Yes. We're <laughs> right not even two minutes in, right? She has those legs tight, Jimmy. Yeah, she maybe seems up the triangle here, but looks like yeah. Hernandez finally getting some space. There she got Her head is out. Now this is when the wrestling comes into play, Jimmy. She's able to take her down. Maybe get some ground and pound work there. Some knee, there are the knees. And the clinch just now in guillotine the position, guillotine, yeah. going hard for it. But look at Kayla there, trying to wrap that leg around, not allowing her to push up the hip. Kayla Rocco now looking for space, arm in guillotine. Daniela Hernandez putting her hips hard into this finish. Yeah, but I don't think she has that deep yet. Yeah, look at just the neck there, a little bit out. And no guard right now, no. not really able to activate her hips when it comes to this guillotine. But how the momentum swings back and forth in this sport. But Rocco dropped her with a jab in the but opening seconds. The damage could be done here, Jimmy, with those knees. There's the uh, escape from Rocco. Now we got a fight. I'm back to the center where the decorated amateur boxers ready to ply her trade. Daniela Hernandez has already felt the power. Dropped by a, a simple jab. One of the themes last week, a little bit of a theme so far this week, once again, is round number one doesn't mean you're going to lose the fight. It's like a, a comeback, comeback story. Tonight, yeah. right? <laughs> combate, global, combate Global has become a home of the comeback. <laughs> And it's always great to see, and just in sports in general, right? When you have someone, a team, an individual losing, and then you come back. It ain't over till it's over. And when I was studying Kayla Rocco for this for this fight, as I was sitting there watching her tape, and, and, and the first word that occurred to me is picky. She's picky with her shots. She's not a volume. She doesn't striker. waste it. No. She doesn't no. waste it. No. Stays behind the jab. Can throw an, an, an excellent right hand. Ooh. She doesn't throw it if she doesn't think it's going to land and crisp. Yeah. Not a volume striker. She throws very, very straight, very, very tight. Great combination again. Surprising, going for a takedown of her own. Now, I'm sure if I'm if I'm K-Rock, she had a split decision victory. She had a split decision defeat in La Haula. I want to get away from the splits. Yeah, exactly. Right? I want to win this in, in nice fashion. Yeah, you don't want a, you know the finish or a dominant performance, right? Judges, make their night easy. Because, yes, a win is a win. 
but that split in there, you know, it's like, ah. And the idea that you could have done just a little bit more right. is what keeps you awake at night as a competitor. Right now, Kayla Rocco keeping the pressure on Daniela Hernandez. Daniela, a standout wrestler. Once again, represented Mexico in the Pan American Games. Oh, nice shots over the top. Another classic USA versus Mexico clash inside La Hala. Oh, oh another good left. What I'm this liking one to here, the chin. what I'm liking from K Rock, Jimmy, is in that position there that she was really pressuring Hernandez to La Hala, and that's going to kill a wrestler. Nice sharp punches, Daniela Hernandez winging those shots a bit. Well, she said she's been doing boxing herself. Right. A lot of her, her punches a lot wider than those of Kayla Rocco. And as we're ending round number one. Great round so far for the boxer from ATT. And then the overhand right, Jimmy, as we predicted that she was going to throw. When you have that taller fighter going up against a shorter uh, fighter, you're going to see that overhand right very much so. It's but, like you don't have a choice but to throw the wider punches. You're not, the straight punches well, aren't going to land. Yes, but your opponent's taller but you have the kicks. The punches. But yes. you have the kicks, right? Yes, for sure. And and that's one thing that, that, that you just have to adapt to the kicks. And you could you could always chop down a tall tree with the, with the legs. Let's see what we can see. There it is. Right, that was the opening minute of the first round. And I'm listening right into the corner. I'll try and translate as much as I can here. There's a lot of head movement. So that's when that boxing comes into play. Because she's she told me she was working a lot of the boxing, but we're looking at the highlights here from that first round. There's a little bit of a grappling there, almost an opportunity for K, K Rock to get a submission, but the fight ended up going right back to the feet again, Jim. You see Thiago Alves, Johnny Eblen, two stands out, standouts from American Top Team in the corner of Kayla Rocco. And got to like the way their fighter fought in round number one. And it, it, there's nothing to take away from K-Rock. She did what she had to do. She looked very good in there. Start of round number two. Kayla Rocco in the black trunks and black top versus Daniela Hernandez in the red. And listen, Hernandez has a lot of pressure. We haven't really touched on the fact that she's undefeated. Yeah. She's going in there with a 4-0 and record, and, and, and she's going up against a more experienced fighter with 4-4. Four four. Look at the response to the kick. It's going to be punches from Kayla Rocco. Great feints there from Kayla Rock. Hands very, very high. No defensive lapses, but she shows she's not afraid to throw those kicks. Not whatsoever, but I haven't seen much of the wrestling from her. Hand. No. I guess she's she's very confident about all this boxing, but haven't seen from that as well. Well, round number one, we have open scoring. No surprise. Kayla Rocco, 10-9, all three judges' scorecards. Remember, her corners are aware of that. They can tell the fighter. They're aware of it before we are in the broadcast booth. Ooh. And Daniela Hernandez just hasn't seemed to have, have found a way around those straight punches. Like the path to the takedown is blocked by that fist. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of feinting and switch, and it's now about timing. Direction. It's a lot of uh, timing. It's about time. There it is. That's what they wanted. Deep single yep. leg and got yes. it done, but Rocco not staying on her butt. Yes. Excellent yes. job getting that leg back. Well, that's the type of training you get at ATT, Jimmy. They can do it all over there in Coconut Creek. I'll Again, tell you a good example, Sony. Amanda Nunes. Yes. Right yes. before before she got into ATT, those takedown defense, you, you couldn't take her down. Excellent job, reaching. Robbie Lawler. Yep, Sam, oh, reaching back. Oh, looking for the head. The problem is you can give up your back in that position. Kind of a modified crucifix position yeah. here. Very dangerous right now for Daniela Hernandez. What we call a Grammy roll in wrestling. It works to put somebody on their back, but it can be dangerous here. Very good right here. Yep. Yep. If Rocco can pop Take her, her head, head out, yep. she'll have the back. Never and she's be got there. it. Now she may have the almost there to get the mount. Almost there in full mount. Left leg still in that little bit of that half guard position. Daniela Hernandez threatening with that guillotine. Not going to work Great. there from half guard. Yep. Great way to transition to, to the side, but. Hernandez is still holding on. Not much there to do for Hernandez. Yeah, a little rookie mistake going yep. back into half guard. She right. had side control. And you hear her corner saying elbows now. Go to those short weapons. Don't have a lot of space. Very chest to chest. That's where elbows, short punches, so important. Not a lot of power, but enough to really throw you off and 
And look at the face of Daniela Hernandez having to deal with the physical pressure of a bigger fighter on top of you. And we're seeing it yeah. right here. Rodolfo, you know well as I do, that just wears you out, I mean, that physical pressure. Exhausting. Ugh. And, and you just, it's like, how the heck do I get out of this yeah. thing? You know what I mean? What do you do? You explode it and maybe you leave, leave right. something behind it. No good, no good options from there. But even with the explosion, it's about timing. Yeah. When that person gets off to transition to the side, you have to find the right, the right opportunity. Daniela Hernandez using Z guard, now rolling for a knee bar. Trying to go through, she can get the ankle. Good job from Rocco, triangling her own leg. That's great defense from there. Someone's after your leg, put weight on it. That's, That's the it. easiest defense. That's all it is. Now, big mistake there from Hernandez. She gave her back. Short hammer fist, but not going to do a ton of damage from here. Rocco so far on top. Judges, whoever's on top is usually winning. Nice short shots. Good shot there from Rocco. Oh, Another nice. One. Beautiful right hand. That one may have stunned Hernandez. That was a good one. Rocco's just looking like a stud in there right now, Jimmy. You know, leaps and bounds above her yeah. last fight, right? Yeah. Really. Yeah. She, look at that. Just look at that right yeah. there. Yeah. That right there. Look at that. Uh, she, she waits for her to get up. Can I throw in a Sakuraba reference? Yeah, sure. Can I yeah. Do that? Yeah, yeah. Sakuraba-esque <laughs> in pride. Going for the leg. Google it if you don't know what we're talking yeah. about. If you're too young to understand it, look at it. Oh, there's that left. Good shot from Daniela Hernandez, but a lot to a lot of ground to make up in this fight. So far, good stuff from Kayla K Rock Rocco. Not just good strikes, but good angling after she punches. You know what I like about K Rock is that she is she brings that boxing sense, but she makes it work in MMA. Yeah. Right? And, and that's kind of hard to do. Yeah, she still has that 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 very boxing type type of stance. Yeah, but good angling, good right. footwork as we end round number two. Another great round for Kayla Rocco. She's definitely looking like a hundred bucks in there. Very, very good. More. Hey, if you jab to get a little pull, sometimes double up on that jab, right? Whenever she's double up. There it is. We're taking like some of the highlights from that second round. Hernandez attempted to go for that single leg, but great takedown defense from K Rock. We talked about it, Jimmy. That evolution as a fighter we're seeing it here. Developing in all skills. And she is taking on a seasoned pro wrestler here tonight in Salahala, but it's been K Rock. That has been the story here tonight with that striking. Cutting the corners, making it nearly impossible for the tiny mechs. To not, go down to the ground. Not breathing heavy as we start round number three. Gas tank looks good for both of these ladies. But it is Daniela Hernandez on your right in the red that needs to flip the script. She is behind. Kayla Rocco will have the scorecards in a second. Remember, open scoring here at Combate Global as we begin round number three. And it has been all Kayla Rocco. Amateur boxer, decorated in the boxing ring, made the transition to MMA. To help up Dean Thomas, some American top teams. So far, she has looked fantastic. She looks superb in there, like a seasoned pro. Daniela really Hernandez, good. in her previous fight, she's been able to use those wide punches to kind of get inside but the body do, lock. But you can't do that against a, 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 a K-Rock. She's going to get you. Exactly. Because she's so technical. What She'll let you do it, yeah. and then she find that spot. Uh, the, the way she's been able to close distance and pass Ooh. fights not working now. And there's the open scoring. No surprise. Two rounds to two rounds to none for Kayla Rocco. And what 2018, I, all three judges scorecards. What I like about Rocco Jimmy is how she plays the distance. She leaves that distance in between, not allow her to go in for the wrestling, for the takedown. What do they say? You're tall, fight tall. You're right. Long, fight long. She is fighting long and tall, despite just being five foot three. Against opponents four foot nine, you've got the right. height advantage. Use it. Now, as a shorter fighter, in order for you to go in, you have to take a hit or two to get. I mean, you just have to. There's no way out of it. Now, we were discussing before this fight happened. You want to be a pressure fighter? You got to have the chin of a pressure fighter. You have to be willing to take the risks of a pressure fighter. And so far, they haven't worked out. Oh. 
And also, so far, a very composed fight from Kayla Rocco, right? She hasn't sold out for the big shot. She hasn't said, oh, I'm gonna get the knockout right now and leaned in anything. It's been tight, it's been accurate and straight. There she went, great body shot to Hernandez. Hernandez is just not, she's just not bringing it right now. Uh, hasn't found the way in. The path has not been open. It's been blocked with straight punches. And the numbers, although they favor Rocco, they haven't told the tale. Rocco has landed the much more effective strikes, but still ahead in the count. 60 punches to 49 from Hernandez, 24 kicks to only six for Hernandez. Takedown, only one for Hernandez. It's been a non-factor so far in this fight. And those kicks for Rocco, they're not for knockout purposes. It's more for setups to set you up to come in with the shots, with the striking. And range finders keeping her opponent at the right distance. Cannot lose focus halfway through round number three. This has been, the last couple weeks have been all about the comeback, and Rocco doesn't want to let that happen. Hernandez trying to do the collar and elbow lock up, but Rocco wasn't having anything of it. This is not rusty. Oh, good way though, positioning Hernandez's head, because oh, no. those hands were it up. Now Rocco starting to feel it, finger toward the ceiling. I don't know, she's two minutes away from going over 500 in her MMA career. Close to giving Daniela Hernandez her first loss in MMA. Yeah, see, Hernandez is trying. She's trying to pressure, but as soon as she walks in, she's getting, she, she meets a jab. Stay behind the stick and the rest of the fight works out. Sound advice in any combat sport, MMA included. So that's why here you have to go maybe pick an, an ankle. You know, it, it, it work the angles and pick the angles, go lower. So far it's been Rocco with the superior footwork. Yep. Now you're starting to get into desperation territory, approaching a minute left, round number three. Yeah, right now, I just... We know from the open scoring that it's, it's finish or bust for Daniela Hernandez. Tiny oh. MX has been on the wrong side of a lot of those punches. They gained that tie of just Rocco's just so effective with elbows and little short shots. Yeah, right now it's just a desperate moment. You saw how she put up her shoulder there? Yep. And she backed up. Now we're seeing Kayla Rocco press the action just a little bit. 45 seconds Ooh. left to go in round number three. That's just body language, Jimmy. Your body yep. telling me I don't want any of that. With 30 seconds left, the question is, will Kayla Rocco let her hands fly, try to get the finisher, be content to go to the judges? She knows she has this one sewn up. You know she wants the finish. How hard is she willing to get it as oh. Hernandez trying to land big shots under He's 20 going seconds. For it, Jimmy. She He's is going for it. not backing up in a fight Ooh. that she has in the bag. There we Ten go. 10 seconds left. Rocco feeling it. Global. Oh. She's feeling it. You're in the howler, throw everything you got, and she is doing that. Oh. Beautiful <laughs> fight from Kayla Rocco. Daniela Hernandez giving it everything to the final bell. Now this was the night of the boxer. Wow. Kayla Rocco, hands in the air, beautiful performance. Good stuff. Kayla Rocco has to be feeling great. Her team coming in to congratulate her. Johnny Eblen, Tiago Alves stands out, standouts at American Top Team. But when we come back, Omar Amador will make it official. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Combate Global. It was an incredible performance from Kayla Rocco, but did she get the win? We find out right now. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción, after three rounds of much more action, los jueces están todos de acuerdo. The judges are all in agreement. Para la ganadora por decisión unánime. For the winner by unanimous decision, Kyla Rocha! No 
surprise there. Kayla Rocco giving Daniela Hernandez her first loss as a professional. Couldn't have looked a whole lot better. Getting ready for the head-to-head cara a cara. Rocco, two years the senior of Perez, both coming at five foot two inches. Perez with the slight reach advantage. Kayla Rocco just slipping in at the uh, the max at 106. Katie Perez comfortable at under 105 pounds. We are ready to go in the Adam Weight division, our featured women's bout, which is a priority for Combate. And we keep looking for the big fights. We know the women audience continues to grow. They're going to enjoy this one, according to Rodolfo. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso átomo de Spout, en the Adam Weight Division, los jueces, the judges. Dorian Mirasola, Eliseo Rodríguez y Ricardo Celis. Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 104 libras y tres cuartos, or official weight, 104 and three quarter pounds. Entra por séptima vez a la jaula, con tres victorias y tres derrotas. She enters la jaula for the seventh time as a professional, with three victories against three losses. Fighting out of Greensboro, North Carolina. La máquina asesina, Katie. Pérez. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestida de negro, her opponent in the red corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 106 libras, her official weight, 106 pounds. En su octavo combate, con tres victorias y cuatro derrotas, she enters la jaula for the eighth time as a professional, with three victories against four losses, hailing from Reading, Pennsylvania, and fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Kayla, k Rocco. El referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. El referee internacional, Raúl Porrata, the third inside Mahala. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. I expect a clean fight. Touch gloves now. Back to your corners. Right, right from the start, Max. We'll Ready. see Paris with that stand-up game. And Kayla. Rocco with that boxing. You see that good footwork? A little different though from this time around. Well, there, there it is. You'll see how she moves her shoulders around, very texture boxing, but fast hands, fast combinations, good timing. And Perez respects the power of Rocco. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't be surprised here, Max, if just a short time, Perez switches gears and takes this fight to the ground. Oh, just great combination from, from Rocco. It's a one-two combo. Rocco all in black, peppering away, looking to get the striking in under the belt, fighting Katie Perez, who, as Rolofo pointed out, watches the fights, tweets on fight nights when the cards are going. We absolutely love that. She says MMA has given her a purpose, a drive. My life went off the rails. I had no direction. Training has given me the ability to open up, to be willing to fail and learn from those mistakes. And Rocco is connecting. Look at Perez's face already. The marker too, right up by the nose. So those fast hands of Rocco are doing damage to Perez already. And Perez is aware of that and you hear, you, you hear Rocco's corner, she's about to shoot. Because that, that is where the advantage goes to Perez on the floor. But Rocco does have good takedown defense. It's, it's what I'm liking from Rocco, Max, compared to the last time from Cunningham, is she's so fast with her hands, and as quickly as she nails those shots, she quickly moves out, not allowing Perez to cut the distance and go for any takedowns. Great. Very nice. Don't let us set her feet, Katie. Use those angles. Nice. 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 Back and forth. Nice. Short. Yeah, cranky Perez. shots and already redness around the left eye of Perez, who is nicknamed. Oh. There's a nice knee coming in. Yeah, and see how Rocco positioned her hip really well. 
took Perez to La Jaula in the clinch. Perez here does it to the floor. Now let's see what Perez could do. Although Rocco putting all that weight. Let's see if she can capitalize on this, maybe even some shoulder shots from that position. If she get, if she's able to get that arm out, that right arm out, she can land some shots here. But Perez feels very comfortable. And look how she uses the howl like here. Great psychology on her end, positioning herself. Under two minutes to go here, Katie Perez in her guard right now, nicknamed Makina Asesina, which means the assassin of machines. We asked her about that, she says the problem is when she goes in her car, it breaks down. When she walks by a lamppost, it turns off. Yeah, that feels like she funny. has I go, that's interesting, uh, interesting turn. I did not expect that. <laughs> that was quite funny when you showed that. Now, have you noticed, Max? Rocco was positioning her head, and that could be really disturbing, especially for the fighter on the floor. She was rubbing that head right on the chin. Now they're gonna, Raul Porata, referee Internacional, will this, break them up. This benefits Rocco. She wants this fight to be, to remain standing. So she can work those combos. Rocco's been sharp. Yeah, man, so, she's so fast. And fast. So fast, it's that boxing background. And what I like here is that we're seeing less of that Boxing stance, you see that well-rounded, that full MMA fighter. Good so kick that in the midsection. That improvement is there, man. She's done her work. Oh, great combination, Rocco. Man. And you can see what they saw in her, the American top team from that video. Then you can also see what she said, feeling more comfortable in this division. Man, and she's... She feels comfortable, and she's she's a she's a big 105er compared to, to Katie. You see that 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 muscular definition. She's a stronger of the two. Well, this is why we love the women's fights, action-packed. And Rocco looking to maybe finish it this first round, using that right hand like a piston as we reach oh, man. the end of round one. That's just the first round, Max. Explosive. <laughs> wow. Rocco brought everything so far. And they're taking a look at the left eye of Katie Perez. Make sure it, vision is OK and she can continue. It looks pretty superficial, but that's me saying it. How am I supposed to know from <laughs> out here? But it's bothering her. Oh, absolutely. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Great hook. Just a combination here from Rocco. That's the story of this fight. Fast hands, stick and move. Perez already damaged under that eye. And then here it fight stood up on the feet. Back here for round two, in between rounds, they tended to the left eye. And you can see it is near that eyeball of Katie Perez, gotta make sure she can see okay. You have to imagine it's somewhat uh, handicapping her a little bit because Rocco is connecting and Rocco is going at that left eye. Yeah, she's, Hit she's, move. Yeah, she's bringing herself down right to the level of Perez. Slanding in those shots. And there it is, Perez with the take them, a good, great defense from Rocco. Rocco into the guard. Uh, Rocco saying, MMA has helped me create a sense of discipline that I would not have had without. I think that speaks for so many people. We all maybe look to have a little discipline in everything you do. It's a game changer, certainly for, probably for all of us, certainly for Rocco. It also allows her to express herself. She loves to challenge herself every day. And she takes the first round clean in the official scorecard. Again, if you're new to Combate Global, that is the judge's scores. That is official. And the fighters in the corners are allowed to disseminate that information in any way. You got to go back, Max, to November 2020, where Rocco had a rear naked submission victory. So she does have a sub. 
in her resume, her pro resume, as a fighter. Now almost in the mount there for Rocco. Yeah, Perez might be in deep waters here if she gives that back. And they're in the center of La Jaula. This right here is, is one of the most toughest positions for a fighter that's on the floor. We saw... We saw Perez in her last fight, and she got off to such a fast start oh. in her defeat to Andrea Meneses and slowed down. A different story here. She has not gotten out of the blocks whatsoever, and got to give Rocco credit for all of that. And now you hear Perez. A little be careful of those gloves. Yeah, Perez's corner, Max, is telling him, just wait for that opportunity so you can look for a triangle. But the corner of Rocco told her to pass the side, and as she's in the side, where she can land in those shots, Side control, and she's got a good hold of it. Attempt there for Perez to get her head back. Yeah, Perez is searching for that triangle, but Rocco's just too smart. Rocco said her boxing's too crisp, too fast. She gets to train with some of the best in the world at ATT, which includes Joanna Janjacek, Myrna Moros, Kayla Harrison, who of course obviously a judo, elite judo competitor, done very well at MMA. Dustin Poirier and Jorge Masvidal gets to see those folks train. You can see it in her game. And even on the ground, she looks good, but really on the stand-up, she looks spectacular. She has that corner man, Parumpa. Extraordinary submission. Jiu-Jitsu expert. Great takedown defense from Rocco. Not allowing Perez to finish off the takedown. Transitioning very well, positioning her hip down. Now, if she only, from this position, she needs to turn, there it is, it's a turn right there. But Perez giving her back, good way on her end. And then she may be in trouble here, Max. Got that arm right lock. under there, the arm lock locked in there. Rocco now looks to squeeze. Let's see how her jujitsu game is. If Rocco was able to get that leg out and transition and put in that pressure, that could be enough. Now that blood flow she, is. Rocco said she was going to finish this by TKO or KO. Maybe she finishes by submission. Yeah, she needs to flatten out Perez. She needs to get those legs out by the side that she's doing right there. Now she needs, she needs to turn. Keep turning, turning. Not that she got out. She still may have something in store for Perez, who's in a lot of discomfort. Nothing is working for Perez. Rocco just positioning Did her you hear body that from weight. The corner? Yeah. Going for yeah. a 10 8 round. Yeah. She might be in it. We've already had a 10 8 round tonight. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Slide the knees, slide the knees to mount. <laughs> Slide the knees to mount. That's going to be a tall Rocco, order, yeah. but it's it's certainly on offer for Rocco. Well, it, she's it, going for it. And it is, and it's just a matter of timing because what Katie's trying to do is position those legs. So it's just a matter of just looking for the right opportunity to make that quick move. You have to be so fast. Katie Perez's corner saying anything. Elbows. That's the only thing Rocco's allowing her. Now it's her choke as well. Oh, but you tried standing one, but maybe she thought she had something. Yeah. Now Rocco though did turn that chin, not allowing her to grab anything. Good on her end. And that'll take us to the end of round two. Another dominating round for Rocco. here for round three. Rocco looking fresh. He's got a good lather of sweat, no doubt about it. This is, this is always hard work. And now Katie Perez has to go for it. This is such a big moment for her. I am a fighter. I must keep on fighting. If I had to pay to do it, be a fighter, I would. Well, we're not asking her to do that, but this is how important it is for her. She wants to bring home glory to the gym to her school, wants to bring a claim to my coach we talked about earlier. Hopefully bring back trophies and or belts. Now she's just hoping to bring in some, some pride in this third round. Good uppercut, Rocco. And Rocco just has so much power in those hands. Oh, good right hand, Perez. connected. Rocco, though, didn't even, wasn't phased by uh, it. Got her attention a little bit. <laughs> it got, but. Oh, another right hand, Rocco, on the button. Three tremendous 
rounds of action. Oh, that one brought it to a knee. Perez to a knee. Well, Perez actually got a round back there. So she's got something to build a foundation off of. Looking for that knee, perhaps. Rocco, 2018 on the two scorecards, which is great news for her. She got something. But either way, now Perez here searching for anything that's available. She has less than four minutes if she wants to get this victory. She has to do it now. And you hear there the positioning the head from Rocco. guard. I mean, this is really the case. Perez has been all right. Rocco's just been spectacular. Very well. Super prepared. She knows how to position herself, using her weight where she needs to. She says she felt healthy at 105, which is you don't hear. This wasn't a, a terrible cut for her. She was able to manage it according to her. I mean, those are the fighters talking. You got to take with a, a grain of salt at times. Yeah, Rocco, it's, Rocco did. Great way of Rocco positioning her chin to the other side, not allowing Perez to capitalize and submit her with that guillotine attempt. Now she's trying to put that foot. Man, Rocco's just so good. When she she feels that Perez has something, she positions that head up. Now she, she can't let those, those arms loose, though, because Katie could be very fast and get a triangle choke. Trying to get that leg up there to do just that. Plenty of time here for Perez, who's had a nice third round, been able to slow down Rocco somewhat. She's been working on this, but Rocco, good positioning, not allowing Perez to capitalize on it, not three, allowing to grab it. Pardon me, Rolo, yeah. three professional wins for Perez, all three via submission, including her one win in combate in her two fights. It was a triangle choke over Crisula Kukuvedekis back in July. This is her third fight this year for combate. Really, third fight in the back end of the year. Third fight in five, four months. Rocco, good way, man. Good way of just scrambling, getting out of any harm. You see from this angle here, great way of taking yourself out. Come on, come on, let's finish this fight. Good scramble. Good scramble from Rocco. Guillotine attempt here, not much behind not it. Not much, yeah. What can Perez do here to, to salvage something in this fight? Right, and, and it's, it's just a matter of timing. You've been seeing her, she's just desperate, trying to put those legs up to grab a triangle choke or an arm bar, something. She's trying to grab for something. But Rocco is just so good. Balancing her weight. And every time that she feels that Perez is grabbing something, she shifts her weight to the other side, not allowing Perez to finish it. Rocco gets to her feet. Perez not letting her in, but the damage may have been done. Let that leg. See if she has that leg now, Max. She's trying for a submission victory here. Rocco, one submission win in her career. Rear naked choke, November of last year. Rocco needs to get herself out this position. She has Could 20 seconds. Could you imagine? 20 seconds. Perez, last chance cafe. Starts to crank. Perez trying to expand that hook, that those hips to extend the leg, but Rocco not allowing her to do it. That's why she has that leg back. Still but she needs to be careful. Once. She needs to be cautious. She needs to push off with that foot. There wow. it is. Oh, Perez still battling. Takes a couple of kicks to the face for all her oh, boy. efforts. Three rounds of tremendous action between Rocco and Perez. Official decision coming your way next. El juez Mirasola anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Rocco. Judge Mirasola scores a 29-28 in favor of Rocco. El juez Celis, 29-28 a favor de Perez. Judge Celis scores it 29-28 in favor of Perez. Y el juez Rodriguez anotó 30 a 27. Judge Rodriguez scores it 30 to 27 in favor of the winner by way of split decision. A favor de la vencedora por decisión dividida. K. Ra. Kayla! Wow, Kayla Rocco, Rocco looking over to her corner after she heard yeah. Perez got the first judge's scorecard. Could not believe it. <laughs> yeah.